Welcome to Electron Line. Given this DC circuit, let's find out what the current is through the capacitor, through the inductor, the voltage across the capacitor, the voltage across the inductor, and the energy stored in the capacitor and in the inductor at steady state. In other words, we close the switch, we let the current flow for a while, and at the end, when everything is stable, steady state condition, what are those six items in the circuit? To do that, at steady state, we can imagine that no current will flow to the capacitor because the capacitor will be filled with charge, and therefore the capacitor acts like an open in the circuit. The inductor at steady state, we can imagine then that the current is steady, there's no change in the current. If there's no change in the current, the inductor acts simply like a short. It doesn't oppose anything, and so we can simply replace the inductor by a short. We can then redraw the circuit as follows. At steady state, so in other words, at t approaching infinity, that's another way of saying when everything settles down, at steady state, the circuit changes to the following. We still have the resistors. We have a second resistor here, and the inductor will now be replaced simply by a short. Here we have another resistor, but the capacitor will now be replaced by an open. And that will be the equivalent circuit at steady state. We still have 12 volts on the source, we have a 1 ohm resistor there, we have a 5 ohm resistor here, and here we have a 4 ohm resistor. Notice we have the current through here, I, and we have the current through here, which is I sub L, and we have the current through here, which is I sub C, but you can imagine I sub C would be equal to zero, because at steady state there's no current flowing through the capacitor. So I sub C is equal to zero. And I sub L is equal to the total current I through the circuit, because at that point, if we call this an open circuit, there's only one option for the current to flow. And that means that this will be equal to the voltage applied divided by the total resistance on that loop. This would be equal to 12 volts divided by 1 ohm plus 5 ohms, a total of 6 ohms of resistance, which is equal to 2 amps. So we have I sub C is equal to zero and I sub L is equal to 2 amps. What about the voltage across the capacitor? Well, the voltage across the capacitor, since there's no current flowing through this branch, there's no voltage across the, the resistor here, that voltage has to be the same as the voltage across this branch. That means the voltage across the 5 ohm resistor. What we need to do then is we need to find out what the voltage is at this point, and in the circuit here we call that V1. So let's find out what V1 is equal to. Notice this is a voltage divider, right? We have 12 volts here, some of the voltage drops across the 1 ohm resistor, and some of the voltage drops across the 5 ohm resistor. So what is V1 equal to? V1 is equal to the 12 volts supplied by the source times the ratio of what is dropped here versus what is being dropped there. So there's a 1 to 5 ratio here. So, well, not actually 1 to 5 ratio. Notice that 1 sixth of the voltage is dropped across here and 5 sixths of the voltage is dropped across here because the total resistance is 6 ohms. So 1 sixth is dropped here and 1, 5 sixths are dropped across that resistor. So the voltage at 1 is going to be equal to that would be um, 5 ohms, the, the resistance in the other branch, divided by the total resistance, 1 ohm plus 5 ohms, like this. That's how you find that. So this is equal to 5 sixths of 12 volts, which is equal to 10 volts. So the voltage at this location there is 10 volts, the voltage over here is 0, so the voltage across this branch must be 10 volts. That means that volts across the capacitor is equal to volts a voltage at this particular branch point which is equal to 10 volts now we need the voltage across the inductor but again at steady state there is no voltage across the inductor because there's no opposition to the current change because there is no change to the current and so therefore we can say that the voltage across the inductor must equal zero volts finally we need to find the energy stored on both the capacitor and the inductor the inductor first, we know that the energy across the inductor is equal to one half the inductance times the current at that time. 
times i through the inductor, i sub l, and of course that needs to be squared. That is equal to one half times the inductance is two Henry's and the current at the time i sub l, which we have right here, is two amps. That would be two quantities squared. The units, of course, are joules, and we have one half times two that cancels out, which equals four joules. That's the energy stored on the inductor because of the magnetic field that it has. And then finally, the energy stored on the capacitor, that's equal to one half the capacitance times the voltage squared, the voltage across the capacitance. And we have that right here, which is 10 volts. So this cannot be written as one half times the capacitance is one farad and the voltage is 10 volts. And we have to square that. That will also be in joules. That's 100 divided by 2. So the work done to put all that charge on there, which is equal to the energy stored on the capacitor, is equal to 50 joules. And that's how we analyze a DC circuit like that, that in this case has both a capacitor and an inductor on it. And notice that at steady state, a capacitor acts like an open, an inductor acts like a closed circuit. That's the key to solving a problem like that.